we celebrate as we welcome Pastor Ben Maji. Come on, celebrate Jesus in his life. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, I want to acknowledge the leadership of this house um, and the person of Prophet Mike. Um, such, an, such an awesome man of God. Um, I also want to acknowledge Mama. Thank you. Um, Pastor Solomon, such an honor. It was it was quite a short notice, but um, when he called, I could just say, no. I mean, you know, when if you, I don't know if you notice when they say all the workers should stand up and give the gift, I stood up. <laughs> you may not know my my team. But I'm in mean the workforce. <laughs> Hallelujah. Such an honor. I consider this house a family. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank you, um, Apostle. I also want to acknowledge. Um, Pastor Tosi, don't worry about the special. I was here the day Prophet Mike was explaining special <laughs> apostle. So I think I have a clue. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank you for believing. And congratulations. I heard you in Abuja now. So you'll be speaking with us from from the villa. <laughs> Um, I want all of us to just acknowledge Daddy together. I, I, I just, just our love. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, when God uses a man and uses him for long, it is because that man is very important to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you see, there is, there is already an anointing that comes with old age. <laughs> whether, the, whether the man is not in the kingdom or not, there is a grace. When you see old people don't despise, then when you now see an anointed man who has age on his side, he can shift all kinds of things. Thank you so much, Daddy. Can we acknowledge God? Father, we give you praise. Express your heart of love to him. Yes. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of love, you are faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you.
just talk to God, say, Father, speak to my heart expressly. As we've come, we behold you and we're changed. Just speak to God. Father, we thank you. Lord, as we behold your word, we ask that you open up our hearts, that we behold your law, and we will be changed from glory to glory. Everyone of us that is here, not one will live here the way they came, and you alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please sit down. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I wanted to begin from the book of First Samuel chapter 3. But um, before I do that, let's go to Mark chapter 3. sensing a push that this message would may change but I let's just start Mark chapter 3 I'll read um, from verse 13 thank you Jesus Mark chapter 3 from verse 13 the Bible speaking and it said Okay, I would like that we read together. Maybe maybe 13 to 15. Okay. 1, 2, 3, let's go. And he goeth up into a mountain, and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. Hallelujah. Now, from verse 13, the Bible said, and when he went up to the mountain, the Bible said, he called unto him whom he will, or him whom he would, and they came unto him. I just wanted us to see something very quickly. Um, sorry, before I continue, because I know we will take off very soon. Congratulations. Congratulations for... Um, for coming into this layer of life and ministry and the things that God would have you do in your life and destiny. Congratulations, Pastor. I think they are both pastors from here. I I heard so, but I heard you are now in Bini, right? Am I correct? Edo State. Okay, not necessarily in Bini. Okay, so congratulations. Can we put our hands together for them? Hallelujah. Yeah. So, the Bible made us understand that Jesus now wanted certain people and um, he wanted them to do a particular thing, an assignment, whatever you would want to call it. He was going to send them forth. You know, but the protocol for an assignment is that there must be a calling first. Hallelujah. And a lot of the times, um, a lot of the times we we are too eager or we, we we desire that god will use us we desire that god will send us out you know and that's what we actually call the calling but really your calling is not into the field your calling is unto god hallelujah please follow me we're going somewhere your calling god does not call you to preach no god calls us to himself it is a man who god has called to himself who had stayed with him well enough that will be an accurate tool for an assignment. Hallelujah. Or else, or otherwise, how do you how do you explain that you want to that you want to reveal a one you don't know? 
Hallelujah. So when God wants to use a man, he calls the man first to himself. So the man can know the one he's revealing. Otherwise, you'll be doing so much and you'll be very effective, but you'll be effective in telling a lie because you are talking about one that you don't know. So when God wants to use a man, he first calls the man. And it is that call that will now determine or that will empower him for his assignment so the bible said he called them that they may be with him hallelujah that they may be with him and so upon calling them then he now sends them out That's Samuel chapter 3. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 3. From verse 1. said that because of the many other things I would want to say. We'll read from verse 1 to 10. First Samuel 3, 1 to 10. Over there, let's go. The Bible said, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And there was no open vision. And it came to pass that at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I and he ran unto Eli and said here am I for thou callest me and he said I called not lie down again and he went and he lay down and the Lord called yet again Samuel and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said here am I for thou didst call me and he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me, and Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be that if he call thee, that thou shalt say, What? Speak, Lord, for thy who? Servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Somebody says as at other times. And Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak. For who thy servant hear that? Now I'm going to speak very briefly, but this is a concern, and that's why I'm bringing it up. Now the Bible telling us from verse one in this scripture that something was going to happen. God was going to visit His people again, but in in this time, so much was happening. The Bible said that the word of the Lord was precious. That word precious means it was scarce. It was it was it was hard to find men of God were not scarce. It's not the temple. There was a temple, but the word of the Lord was scarce. Hallelujah. Every other thing was 
the infrastructure was there but the word of the lord they probably like we would say probably in our time there were churches everywhere from street to streets from every corner there were churches but the word of the lord was, you know the problem is not what to say the problem is what is god saying there's so much to say but it's not it's not in the things we say deliverance is not a function of the things we say is is in downloading that which god has to say for his people we can spend all the time talking but the question is is the word of the lord found in that which is said the bible said in this time one of the challenges they had was that the word of the lord was scarce and so the implication of that was that there were no open visions that was the implication of the scarcity of the word. That was one of the things that was happening. That the atmosphere was not conducive for God to be able to communicate to his people. Even though there was so much to say. You know God does not just speak because there is so much to say. No. No. That he has what to say does not mean he will speak. There must be a people who are ready at that level to which he wants to communicate. Have you not seen that part in the Bible where Jesus was speaking and Jesus was telling the disciples, he said, I have so much to tell you. He said, but you cannot bear them now. I have so much to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. So even though I have spoken to this point, the other things I want to say, at your level you cannot so i don't just speak because i have things to say the thing is that you don't have the capacity that word bear is the same thing that that a woman has is the womb the ability to be able to receive a man okay and after a period of time she's able to conceive and produce by the seed that the man puts within her so jesus is saying that you see these things i have to say you don't have the capacity to hold them and reproduce you cannot manifest this word and i don't just speak so that you can hear i speak so that you can multiply so i have so much to say but you cannot bear them now one other time in first corinthians paul was speaking popular scripture and paul was saying that i've come to speak to you as unto spirituals he said but i cannot because you are carnal and so because of your carnality i can't say the things i need to say so for jesus the implication was that okay what we would have to do because i had things to say now and i cannot say them, we would have to wait for the holy ghost to come and when he comes he will guide you into all truth and i said at the point where the word guide came into that scripture it changed the narrative because for a man to be able to guide you effectively you must be willing to follow nobody guides by force yes so there must be a willingness to follow so in this time because the word of god was cast in those days the bible said there were no open visions so god could not speak as much as he wanted to even though there were things to show there was nobody who was ready to see the eyes of men were occupied with many other things other than god please follow me and listen very carefully some of us desire certain levels of manifestations with respect to our anointings and our callings and all of that but hear this your calling does not just manifest or your assignment does not just manifest because god has sent you to do something no not just because you are anointed there are consecrations for every call and your assignment will determine your consecration hallelujah hallelujah we are maturing a generation your assignment will always determine your consecration for some of you because of the things that god desires to do with in and through you there are certain things that every other person will do that is not for you to do hallelujah hallelujah yes yeah. 
Yes. For some of you, because of your prophetic inclination and the things that God wants to do through you in the prophetic, you are not supposed to be given to movies. Yes. Hear it. Hear me. We are, we are going practical. You are not supposed to be given to movies. But unfortunately for you, you don't know. You, you think that you can, just, you can just do anything and stand up. And then God just moves like that. Hallelujah. No. For some of you, it's not everything that people eat that you should eat. Your anointing or your assignment will always determine your consecration. If you know what God is calling you to do, it's not enough. You also need to know what you have to do to be able to fully come into alignment to that which God will have you do. We are not all the same, oh. We are not all the same. There are some of you here that at a point in your life, as God began to deal with you, God began to tell you certain things that you should not even talk about. Don't discuss these kinds of matters. So when you are in a place and they are discussing politics and God has told you, you see this matter, leave it alone. There's nothing wrong with politics, but for you, it's not what I'm calling you into. So anywhere you find people talking, shut up. Now, God will always do things like this to people, especially those who he has called to deliver people from those spheres. You can't be a savior. Eh? You can't be a savior that God has raised to deliver men from the shambles of politics and you keep complaining about the political situation of the country. No. A savior does not sing the songs of the oppressed. No. He has a different song. You must know what is your assignment. Then you must also know what are the consecrations that are demanded of this that God will have me do. Meanwhile, there are some of you that God has called and said, See, because of what I want your eyes to be seeing, I don't want you to watch movies anymore. There are things I want your eyes to be seeing. So you cannot, you cannot afford to be seeing all the nonsense that Hollywood is putting before you. you these eyes must be separated unto me for the things you need to see so they, they, they will not be corrupted. You began after six months. After one year. And then somebody now told you that there's a Christian movie. There's nothing wrong with this one. It's a Christian movie. It's a Christian movie. <laughs> then you started with Christian movies. Then they now told you that, ah, no, the man that produced or directed this one, this may not necessarily be, but the man is a believer. That's how they moved you. At a point, the Christian movies now finished. Now the, you have stirred up the appetite for movies. So now you just you just feel like ah, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, what you don't get, if it was just about you, it would have been fine. A generation is dependent on your concentration. I wish kingdom people will know that your carelessness is not just affecting you if it is only you it would have been a problem the problem is that people are dying because of your carelessness a generation is dependent on your consecration you see is it not just movies is it not just movies if only you knew So the Bible said that the word of the Lord was cast in those days and there were no open visions.
The Bible is speaking in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, a popular scripture. Colossians 3 16. Maybe if you can help us very quickly. Let's look at that. Colossians chapter 3. I don't want to change this. The Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell. The word of God should not only just dwell in you, it should be rich in you. In all of its nutrients. Because there is something that God wants to do. So it's not just enough that you have scriptures in your head, but the word of Christ should dwell in you richly. How do we know that the word of Christ is in a man richly? We will see it in his speakings. We will see it in his applications. At every situation, what he uses as a tool to confront situations would be the word of God. So the word of God will now become his will now become his compass. It will become his map. It will become his his tool for dictation. He doesn't just do things because everybody is doing it. He does things because the word of God says so. That man's life. People may say, your own is too much. No, it's never too much. As a matter of fact, we are just starting. The word of Christ has to dwell in us richly. In all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It's very easy to know what is rich in our heart. It's very easy to know. Very easy. When you hear a news that does not favor you, what's your first response? When you hear something that does not look like it, what is your first response? At any pressure, what comes out of you? I know what comes out most of the times. Some is even as bad as even when the news is good. Good news. Did you just hear that so 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 and so who has been barring for 18 years just gave birth? It's a lie. So and so problem just something just happened and it's not good. I don't die. And by the way, OMG is not the word of the Lord. Oh my God. The word of God must dwell in you richly. By all means, ensure that you are full of the word. You can't be full of the word and be full of fear at the same time. No. As a matter of fact, the simple logic to being full of a particular thing is that you are emptied of every other thing. Yes. That's the simple logic. You are emptied of every other thing. If, if, if you have dirty water in a cup, and then you can't turn it all out, maybe just pour it out like that. You know, one of the things you have to do is that you need to get enough clean water that is way much more than the dirty water in that cup. And what do you do? You start pouring. And you don't stop. You keep pouring. What will happen eventually is that it will, it will eject all of that rubbish as long as the water keeps flowing. Hmm? Yes. There will be no space for any other thing. What are you full of? Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. 
I wish that was what we we're talking about basically. I would have spent more time to help us explain certain things. And one of the reasons, and that's part of the assignment of the Holy Ghost, of the infilling of the Spirit in the life of a man. Yes. The assignment of the Holy Ghost in the life of a man is to ensure that the Word of God reigns supreme in that man's life. Yes. It's not just to speak it. Speaking tongues is part of it. It's a key. It's an opening to other dimensions and all of that. But much more, there is something the Holy Ghost comes to do when he comes to the heart of a man. The Bible said that he shall not speak of himself. But the things which he has heard of me, that is what he will speak. The sign that you are full of the Holy Ghost is not that you speak in tongues all the time. No. The sign that a man is filled is that the word of God is rich and alive, overflowing in that man's life. Have you not seen that scripture before? Be drunk, be not drunk with wine wherein it is in excess, but be filled what? With the spirit. The one was the lesson he said. Speaking to yourselves. Speaking to yourselves. Psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs making melody in your heart so when a man when a man for example is praying I don't know why I, like I said I sense that this thing is changing but it's fine when a man is praying maybe he hears a bad news something is happening somewhere and that news is going to cause panic and that man goes in to begin to pray he begins to pray in the spirit and he's praying in the spirit he prays in the spirit to a point he gets to a point in that man's life where all of a sudden that's how the man begins to know that the holy ghost is taking over and then he is being filled over i hope you know that we get filled constantly it's not you don't you are not filled once actually that word be filled with the spirit is be being filled with the spirit is a constant thing and one of the ways he will know that the holy spirit is at work and ensuring that there is a fullness is that the word of god begins to come alive in his spirit and all of a sudden it comes alive to a point where the word of god becomes more real than the situation somewhere along the line he may check and there's no fear anywhere anymore so he's not singing the song of the oppressed anymore he comes with a different song what do you think paul was doing when he was in that ship that was going to wreck and everybody was panicking the bible said that all hope was lost all hope was lost the bible said and after much abstinence excuse me abstinence from what it means that when the people were lamenting paul left them and went to stay somewhere I can't be in the list of you hearing this news and then I want to bring a solution to it. It's not possible. If somebody has to bring us from the hole, the person has to come out first. Yes. You cannot bring us all of us from the hole and you are inside the hole with us. How does that work? So the Bible said after much abstinence, Paul came back and told the people in the midst of an evident and eminent shipwreck he said be of good cheer for there stood by me this day the angel of the lord whose i am and who i serve there's one thing i'm sure of it looks like there will be no no hope here everybody's going to die but there's one thing i'm sure of no life will be lost Bible said that the word of God was cast in those days and because the word of God was cast there were no open visions and so because there were no open visions the Bible now said and it came to pass and when Eli was laid down in the place his eyes began to go dim that he could not see and and the, and then the, the lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord and where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep and the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I and he ran unto who who called Samuel who did he run to that is an effect of a scarcity of the word of God 
You know that the word of God is cast in a generation when men begin to take the place of God. So for Samuel that day, when God spoke, because he didn't know God, as a matter of fact, the Bible said the word of God had not been revealed to him. So even Samuel was a victim of the scarcity of the word of God. So when God spoke, the Bible said the Lord spoke, Samuel did not look for the Lord. Samuel looked for Eli. And guess what? It doesn't matter how desperate God is to speak. Like I said earlier, if a man is not at a level to hear what he has to say, he won't say anything. If God... Let's, let's analyze this. If God was going to speak and God was able to open his mouth and say to Samuel, Samuel, so much so that Samuel heard his name. And then Samuel stood up and was going to Eli. Why didn't God just say, it's not Eli that is calling you. It's the Lord. Are you following me? He should have stopped him. Because if he can call Samuel, he can say other things. But no, he doesn't speak like that. The moment he said Samuel, because the man was asleep, please listen to me. The moment he said Samuel, because the man was asleep, it was easy for him to hear his name because at that point, you know, you know, have you had a dream before where, for example, maybe somebody was trying to give you a million dollars? Eh? And then when the person was trying to give you the million dollars, you said no. You wanted money. You said no. Then you now woke up from that dream and you are now, why did I not what? Why did I not collect? Have you had that kind of have you had that kind of dream? Even if it's not money, something good. Or you saw a man of God. And he was passing, and you two, you now passed. You greeted him, hi, hi. <laughs> when you now woke up, you were like, Jesus. Something I should have knelt down before the man for him to impact me. Do you know why it's like that? Because in your dream, eh, it's not this head that is at work. In your dream yes it's not you see that's one of the reasons why in our conscious state we must ensure that we build our spirit well enough eh? yes you don't have control over your dream you know in this in this realm we can think so many things you understand for example when um, um pastor Tosi was introducing daddy you know we were all here. Do you understand that? Now, some people just wanted to sit down. He didn't have anything. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to explain something. Some people wanted to sit down. But when they now saw that everybody stood up, you know, they decided to join. You know, that one now, it is this, is this head that calculates one plus one that is working there. Do you understand? <laughs> but that man, in his, it, it's very easy to say it this way. In his heart, he's sitting down. But for political reasons or diplomatic reasons, we stand up. Hallelujah. Yes. So somebody can see you now and even lie down. And greet you lying down. But in their hearts, they are sitting on your head. But you see, that possibility, that thing is not possible in your dream. Because in your dream, you don't have control over so many things. In your dream, you are who you are. You are. <laughs> the calculations don't work there. So if you are disrespectful at heart, it will manifest there. Yes. It will. Have you not realized that mm, there are times when <laughs> you took the things of God for granted. You are a believer, but you took the things of God for granted. Then you now had a dream where you had a confrontation. 
with, with a spirit or a demon or something and you shouted the name of Jesus and nothing happened if you have had this kind of thing in the name of Jesus <laughs> the guy was even coming close then you now decided to run to make matters worse you are running have you tried running in your dream before and there was no speed <laughs> you run you run you run you run with all of you see that you see that speed that's your real speed in this video let me tell you i'm trying to make you understand that as funny as that sounds it's true that's how fast you are wake up wake up it's the mercy of god that is showing you something wake up you are running pa, 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 pa. as you are running an old woman with walking stick she's still coming closer Samuel, with Samuel, he while he was asleep, he heard Samuel. But when he woke up, that's what I'm going to. When he woke up, okay, the status quo became active, and for the status quo, Eli was the man in the place because the word of God did not have a place. So because Eli was the man, even if God said Samuel is not Eli, is me, Samuel will not hear at that point because his consciousness. So God said, Samuel, the Bible said, he stood up and he went to Eli. And he said, you call me. And Eli said, I didn't call you. It's amazing how that God wanted to speak. There was an experienced Eli in the house. But God will take the pain to wait for a naive Samuel who is dependent he would wait as long as he would wait so that he can communicate if you had something to say just tell Eli Eli knows the protocol of communication but no the order has changed God doesn't just speak like that though. it's one that baffles me I talk about it a lot recently I, I spoke about it somewhere or some few places in the book of Matthew chapter 26 the Bible was speaking about Jesus that when Jesus took his disciples okay let's look at that let's look at Matthew 26 Matthew 26 verse 36 Matthew 26, 36. Look at this. The Bible said, Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here, while I go and pray on them. Now, this is Jesus and his disciples. Are we correct? Of course, there were 12, but at this point, there were not 12, there were 11, because Judas was busy at this point. Hallelujah. Judas was busy transacting on Jesus' head. You know. So, there were 11. Now, out of these 11 people, the Bible says, Jesus told the, the disciples to sit here while he goes to pray. Verse 37. 37. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Excuse me, Jesus. You want to pray you carry the 11 people you know of course it's important i know numbers are important but jesus now told the 11 people to sit down and took three out of the 11. i'm going to pray but now i'm telling three to follow me and i told the remaining um the remaining eight to sit down if it's prayer let's all let us all pray now but the Bible said no. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Verse 38. Verse 38. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death to tarry ye here and watch with me. So Jesus, all the disciples know a side of Jesus. 
where he heals the sick and he raises the dead and he walks on water, the miracle walking Jesus. But now they don't know this side of Jesus that carries burdens. This side of Jesus that carries burdens is not a side that he shares with everybody. He can tell a, a multitude to sit down only for him to begin to wake a few people in the middle of the night and say, let's share burdens. When I saw this scripture, one of the things I began to pray for my life, I said, God, take me seriously. Have you gone for a business meeting before where you want to discuss serious business with somebody? If you and your children were playing before that time, when the person comes, you will give them your phone or give them toy and tell them to go and play. That's what Jesus did with these eight people. Jesus told them, sit down. I'm going to do something very serious. Then he took three. Then it was just these three that Jesus began to tell burdens in his heart. So God can have a hundred people who profess to be believers. But yet, he's waking just two people up in the middle of the night that he wants to pray with them. Wake up, wake up. This guy is snoring, leave him alone. There's something we need to do. Ah! So much so that when he went to pray and he came back, the Bible said these three were sleeping. Jesus was worried that they were sleeping. He woke them up. He said, what? Can't you watch with me one hour? He didn't bother about the eight that sat down. And they were existing. I was doing a study recently and the Lord began to... Sh okay, let's leave that one. That was what was happening with Eli. Eli was in that house. But God was going to speak... And God would rather come to Samuel and say, Samuel, even though Samuel did not know he was the one, and Samuel went to Eli, God waited, he came back, and God called again Samuel. And he went, and he did that three times. And, and Eli now said, oh, okay, this, this is the thing. If you go again, and he comes, this is what you would say. Say, speak, Lord, thy servant. Hear it. And the Bible said, and God came as at other times. I like that word. God came as at other times. Because he has not stopped coming. The reason I came here today to speak about what I'm speaking about is because I realized that we have come to that season and he has come as at other times. The same way he called our fathers and men who he called and they shook the world for him. He has come as at other times. And for some of us, when he called us before, because the word of God has not been revealed to us, you know, and we, we've had signs and signals of his callings and his yearnings and his beatings and his bodies in our hearts but every time we had those things we quench them with careless activities around us but god is calling as at other times There were many times he had called you, Samuel, Samuel, and you woke up, but you went about your usual activities. You went about the things that you would usually do, and so he couldn't speak any further. For some of you, some of those dreams that you've had, where you saw yourself doing all kinds of things for God, that was not the call, that was not the, um, the, the encounter particularly, that was God calling your name. That was God calling your name because he wants to get your attention. There are many other things he needs to begin to open up to you. But when you woke up, you went about your usual activities. Meanwhile, for some of you, what you needed to do was to shut down for that day. Shut down. But because you promised this person that you were coming, 
by 8. You promise the other one that you will be there by 12. You have a wedding by 1. You have a reception by 3 in a different place. You have an appointment by 6. And you have a serious phone call to make by 8. That's how you aborted dealings. Meanwhile, God has come to interrupt your agenda. But you are too busy with activities to know that there are times. See, there's nothing wrong with apology. You can learn to say sorry sometimes. I'm supposed to come today, but I'm sorry. Something came up. And, and it's not. No, you know that this is out of the integrity of your heart. Something came up. I need to. I will see you next week. You can't attend all functions. When the higher calling comes, shut down. Shut down. You have made these mistakes too long. And I'm coming to teach you and tell you that you see, when these things happen to you, you must learn to close all doors and say, Lord, I saw what you showed me at night. What are you saying? Stay there. Don't stay there for one day. Don't stay there for two days. Don't be in a hurry. Wait until he shows up. No, don't be in a hurry. That's how God makes men. And if you don't learn these things, we'll keep repeating the same circles over and over again. And we'll be asking questions like, has God changed? Is it not the same God who, who came in the days of our fathers? Has he changed? How can we claim to have a, 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 a better promises? A, a, the, the promise of good things to come. And yet it seems as if we are, we are in bondage. As if we are in bondage. The Bible said a hair, as long as he is a child, different not from a servant, even though he be Lord of all. As long as he is a child, he will keep suffering the same things over and over again until he grows. It does not just happen because it is in his inheritance. He must grow. So for Eli that day, he said, when God comes, this is what you should say. Speak, Lord, thy servant. The Bible is speaking in the book of Psalms 89, verse 20, a popular scripture. God was speaking and he said, I have found David, my servant. He said, with my holy oil, have I anointed him? I have found David, my servant. What Eli was teaching Samuel in this scripture was the dimension of a man that God cannot resist when God comes. David could have been anything. That's not what God was looking for. The David that God was looking for was the David who is a servant. When he said, I have found David, was it that David was lost before? No, there's something he was looking for. It's the heart of a servant. When he found it, he said, I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. So when Eli said, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth, is a man who has come to that place where he understands that I need to serve the will of one. And that's the consciousness that we must all have. That our lives are no longer our own. The day we came into this kingdom, anybody who wants to advance in the journey of this kingdom and fulfill the agenda of God for his life must come with the heart of a servant. 
there are too many people who want to do the will of God for several reasons. I will soon pray. There are so many people who want to do the will of God for several reasons. For some of us, we like the glamour. Yes, in fact, for most people, they like the glamour. You know, is you know, is this generation that so many people are saying they want to they want to do things for God. They want to. How many of you know that? Generations before now, people are not because men of God were not to be envied. Apart from the fact that they see them as spirits, <laughs> there's no glamour around it. Their trousers don't. It, 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 the trouser has to be suspended in the air for you to know that this is a believer. There was no glamour around it. Now pastors go for meetings and, and people will even be sending notes. Sir, you look so good. Are you serious? Are you serious? I went to preach one time in, in Lagos. I was not married then. I went to preach one time in Lagos. When I left Lagos, I went back to where I was. I wasn't in Katuna then. I was in Cross River. <laughs> I went back to where I was. And after some few days, the lady started calling me. Say, man of God, I was in that meeting where you came to preach. Since the day you left, I have not been able to sleep. <laughs> I said, start, start a prayer meeting. I have not been able to sleep. It has never happened to me before. I say, it's a lie. It's a lie. This is how, this how you people, this is what you do. And it was obvious that I was not the first person that this thing was happening to. I said, it's a lie. She kept calling for weeks and weeks. And at a point, she will now call or she will send a message, please call me back. But I didn't save the number, so I didn't know who it was. One of those days, when she called, she was trying to introduce herself. She said, sir, you, you mean you didn't know who, you, you don't know who I am? I said, I don't know. And look at the introduction, mama. She said, I am that lady in the choir that was sitting on the front seat and was trying to distract you. I said, I said, I didn't notice. She said, I was trying to, I said, I didn't notice. I was too focused on what I came to do. I didn't even know that anybody was trying to distract me. So many people follow God for several reasons. But the ones that God is looking for are the servants. Those who will come to him for just one reason. And the reason is to serve his will. They come to him as a platform. You see, when a man comes to that place, he hardly gets distracted. The things that the devil would have been able to use to distract people, he cannot use it to distract him. Because if that man comes and you don't acknowledge him in a service, and the devil comes to say, can't you see they did never acknowledge you? Was it me I came to do in the first place? I don't even have a name to protect. I don't have an integrity to protect. I came here for one. The Bible is speaking about Paul. The Bible was talking when God was speaking about him and he said, he said, Paul is a chosen vessel. He said, I have raised him up to bear my name. To bear my name. At the point where God said that, it meant that Paul ceased to have a name for himself. So there's nothing you will tell that man that will offend him because his agenda is one. This man has died to himself. He is alive to God. And everything he is out to do is to ensure that God rules and reigns in a generation. I've said this many times and I've said over and over again, I'm not here to make a name for myself. My name, if they will ever forget my name, I don't have a problem with that. As long as it is said at the end of the day that when I came, Jesus was known. Found David, my servant. 
miracles happen when the servants come all kinds of things happen when the servants come no wonder no wonder when in john chapter 2 the miracle at the canal of galilee when mary came mary the mother of jesus came to see jesus and she said she said to jesus he said the wine had finished jesus said what have i to do with thee he said for my hour has not yet come my hour has not yet come that's not why i came here it's not time for me to start doing all of these kinds of things when jesus said my hour has not yet come the wise mother knew the code to introducing timing in the kingdom now heaven's timing is not the clock on your wall heaven's timing are men ready to serve yes i don't know if you know this that the move of god is not activity so thank god for prayer prayer is very important and i've heard people say things like the move of god is prayer the move of god is not exactly prayer the move of god is a people those men will pray those men will love those men will study those men will walk in obedience but the move of god is a people when she said my time has not yet come mary went to certain people and the bible said she went to the servants i like what she said what she told them let's look at that scripture john chapter 2 we'll pray here from verse 1 look at what the bible said from verse 1 get ready to pray from verse 1 it's not coming and the third day there was a marriage in cana of galilee and the mother of jesus was there verse 2 and both jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage we're going down to five let's go and when they wanted wine the mother of jesus said unto him they have no wine and jesus said unto her woman what have i to do with thee my hour is not yet come <laughs> that's five his mother said unto the servants look at the instruction let's read that together whatsoever he said unto you do what do it that's our part to pay as servants this is our agenda as a servant this is our call this is our mandate this is this is the jurisdiction of service whatsoever he tells you to do I found out that this is one of the reasons why so much has not been happening in our generation is because when we come to him willing to be used by him we edit the things we do yes we edit them it's not whatsoever he said unto us anymore it's whatsoever he said unto us that is reasonable or whatsoever he said unto us that makes us feel good or whatsoever he said unto us that does not trample on our ego so we don't we don't it's not whatsoever he said it's whatsoever he said with a clause that's the one we do we are now the wise generation who tries to counsel our god advise him on the ones that make sense god you don't understand this is the 21st century i know that way this is not the time of moses god this is not even paul and silas this, this is the 
I was listening to Bishop Oedipo yesterday and he said something. He said, there are no apps for fasting. And it's true. The generation is a high-tech generation. But there are certain things that can never be modified. Seeing that we have a, a kingdom that cannot be moved. We have a kingdom that cannot be moved. Our entire life must be laid on the fact that we are here to serve his will. And I'm saying that to say that he's calling us at other times. Let's pray. I came here today with one purpose and one agenda. And the reason why God sent me here is because He's calling. some of you he has been calling you for a long time but like Samuel when you wake up you look for Eli you look for what you have always known you look for the status quo and our God is saying that I'm coming as at other times having brought to you the protocol so you can now understand that there has to be a consciousness that you will make available to, cre to create the atmosphere for him to begin to speak clearly about the things he wants to do in and through you. He's calling as at other times. Some of you, you know the assignment, but you've ignored the consecrations. The promise is one thing. The consecrations are another thing. Promises don't just happen because they were declared. A man must align himself and begin to yield to consecrations. I didn't come here for everybody. If it was just one man who will go back and say, God, I know the things you told me some years ago. I've ignored them. I took them for granted. I started I started yielding to the flesh and to the learnings of this world at a point. Now I can say I'm far. I'm far from my assignment. I'm far from the call. I'm far from your agenda. But he's saying, I am calling as at other times. I'm calling us at other times. Ebros kaminam breketula va. E da barasta vengros to felingresto. Pati cambre sto vinambre kitando brate vinande. Sabarada banke te kebonde breketela. Kebendo savriende, e robe mambre skobenande stovia, e de brato skama mambrete venangra skomba, e repo coprende skombe, e rabo previte mamama. Lord, here is my hand. Hold it and let's go again. A generation is depending on the assignment upon your life, but there is a consecration. There is a whole world of possibilities available 
in that promise for there's a consecration Arabandes Elobanambre Kopene Bande Pray, pray Somebody needs to awake Their midnight call God has been demanding of you That you meet at midnight You need to reawake in that someone else the Lord told you to delete certain applications from your device you've deleted them you brought them back again these things are still in the moment and he's calling Samuel Samuel When you hold my hand, everything When you hold everything. Jesus. Just lift up your hand, silence everywhere, just the keyboard, just play. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. The Lord is pulling a young man into an experience, a divine encounter. This is a generational assignment. It's not something that began with you. It's something that has been on your lineage. But there have been distractions for many generations. And those distractions are befalling you too. 
right now you're almost taking the things of god for granted even though you've been having dreams and certain nudgings here and there with respect to that which god wants to do with you you've been too distracted to yield yeah yeah everybody just lift up your hands as i speak right now grace is released in this place yes god is calling you into a consecration yeah is an ancient activity ancient this is older than you yes god is calling you into it as i speak right now an angel is blowing something that 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 looks like it like a horn like a trumpet i don't know how to explain this is is blowing it into the atmosphere yes so prophetic graces are activated as this as this angel blows this thing that i speak of that i see prophetic grace, graces are activated into the atmosphere consecrations now consecrations some of you will leave this meeting today and you will just realize that your desires have been altered that's why i came your desires have been altered that's right that's right yes something else is going to take over that space in your heart that void a fresh hunger for god is what he begins to make available yes yes your appetites are being recalibrated they are being recalibrated they are being recalibrated they are being recalibrated yes yes the angels responsible for divine encounters are opening up the gates and you are coming in yes you are coming in they are bringing you in one after the other oh yes aha they are taking you up to the mountain spirit of the living god Anta veto veke pandes O tavite mandito bretiva stuvanante Ilatro scamba i kate mindo petiva Artabande pratiba na kambo scaminante Radabangre ketimbo stabinantabunde breketi Samuel Samuel e robe mambra scope mambrate e dubangri e scope membrete e scope ra shamanda e cope pedinato o raba e cross the way crade tubinamba oh oh Samuel, Samuel, your prophetic mantle and chariot has come for you. Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Hear the word of the Lord. Yes. It is time to begin to see the things that I show and hear the things that I say. 
I'm bringing down the mountains. I'm filling up the valleys. Yes. As I speak by the Spirit of the Lord, a river is rising in this place. Yes. Yeah. There's someone here. Something the Lord has been saying for probably about eight years, if not more. But has not taken effect in your life. Is about to begin now. Yes. That's the activation of the spirit. When you are here. When you are here When you are here When you are here When you are here Activations are going on Pray in the spirit for just two minutes I'll be out of your way now Just pray in the spirit for some few minutes when you are here, when you are here, pray, 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 pray. Spirit, breathe, pray. When you are here, activations are taking place. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here, oh, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here. When you are here. You are here, 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 when you are here, yes. Thirty more seconds, pray. Yeah. When you are here. Umbras de Vilambresto Caredi Venantos Cabrienta Elandos Cambe Tefe Tombre Erobe Mamprate Vicandos Camelanta Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just keep your hands lifted, all eyes closed. Just lift up your hands. Like I say, if you want to sit, it's fine. Please just any position that is comfortable is okay. About the time we began to pray. A divine being from above began to move on this aisle. And as he kept moving, I kept seeing like the footprints on the floor. Spirit of the Lord, what is this? And what the Lord began to minister to my heart is that he has come to release the grace for influence it's not a prayer though it's not about your amen don't worry just lift up your hands he has come to release the grace for influence and i saw him walking at the, on the aisle and he was moving towards the back some of you here 
what the Lord is re releasing upon you is an unusual ability to be able to cause change in territories. Yes. It is something you have taken for granted. Like I said, because of the status quo. But now the Lord is saying that I'm calling as at other times. And I've come to release this upon you. And by this, what I'm doing, as I'm speaking right now, I'm already seeing like a sister. There's something that is coming upon you. And I see, I see something like an ant antenna upon your head. I see something like an antenna upon your head. And the Lord is saying that what we're doing on this person is a dressing. We're dressing you up in the spirit. Yes. It's a dressing. We're dressing you up in the spirit. This is influence. This is perception. Yes. They are beautifying you. They are beautifying you. The Lord is putting his word very strongly in the mouth of a prophet. And the Lord is saying that on account of these words that I'm giving to you as my servant, your words, your messages will cause change, cultural change, cultural change, cultural change, cultural change. Yes, I see you speaking in territories and what they have known as traditions for years, for generations before you came, are abolished because of the word of God that is in your mouth. Spirit of a living God. Yes. Just lift up your hands. Who is that young man? God, who is that young man? Yes, I take this anointing upon my head right now and I place it upon him. What you are releasing right now, I place it upon that man. I place it upon him. By the power of your spirit, by the power of your spirit, I take what you are pouring upon my life is for this man, is for this man. A grados man tequida basha. Now, don't, be, don't feel because I said he's a man, you will not open up your spirit. Whether it doesn't matter the gender. But okay, just open up your spirit because something is about to happen. A light is springing out of darkness. As I began to pray in the spirit now. Yes, I see light springing out of darkness, out of obscurity. Whatever they have said cannot happen from you and from your generation. Cross to vietai. Yes. Elandra Stover Nambreketai. Yes. That's a fresh fire coming upon your tongue. Elara Sofretande Erpote die Fande Cruz Tava Scambatete Ibratala Manda Scabande Brocombre Estoviate Prada Bongre Ketinambre Erpapalanda. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Yes, it's by the Spirit. Hey. When you are here. 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 Hey. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, ah, when you are here, ah, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here. Hey, when you are here, 